Uh, welcome everyone on board. Uh, because of uh, the boring topic of this electrolyte and electrolyte and electrolyte, I just decided to change the taste for today. Um, so today we will be discussing about this uh, aneurysm surgery. Uh, any how among you have done this uh, case? Anyone who has anesthetized patient for this aneurysm surgery? Aortic aneurysm. Yes, yes Dr. Dora. Uh, so it was it uh, uh, thoracic or abdominal? Uh, well, I did several uh, emergent <laughs> surgeries. Those were abdominal, but okay. I have participated in some thoracic abdominal, just a few okay. uh, elective surgeries. Okay, so actually, uh, if we just uh, uh, try to dig into this topic, uh, you will see that uh, uh, the categories, or because it's a, it's a, you can say that again, it's a, it's a Pandora's box. This topic is uh, is a tip of iceberg and. It is, uh, if you want to read this topic, or if the examiner is asking a question from this topic, actually uh, uh, the examiner can check a number of things for, uh, from you because uh, whether it will be an emergency like ruptured versus an elective, okay? So this is uh, one thing. Then it will be either uh, the, the surgery, either it is thoracic versus abdominal okay so this will be number two then number three will be uh, whether it is um, endovascular okay or versus uh, open okay then uh, this if it is uh, like uh, sometimes in uh, according to the location maybe uh, provision of one lung ventilation or not okay so you can just divide into uh, these. Actually, the concept with the with I will tell you that if you try to understand um, or if you study in that way, uh, the thing which you will learn will be long lasting. Okay, and you you will not need to read it ev uh, every now and then, and even uh, you will not be worried about revising it because sometimes some things if you understand. It will be, yes, I, I don't remember the classifications. I don't remember uh, the, 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 the diameters, okay? I don't remember the what will be the uh, class one and class two, but I have the concept that, as, that if the location will be uh, like as, as bigger will be the location, sorry, as uh, bigger will be that aneurysm and as uh, higher it will be, it will have more sequelae, okay? So I will also suggest you to make your, this is sort of mind map, okay? So if you make your mind maps for your, uh, your uh, studies like that, it will be helping you forever, okay? So then, then if you just uh, take, then there will be some other concerns or things which you uh, can face. Uh, like for example, preoperatively, this patient would have uh, uh, like a sort of comorbidities. Okay, like there will be certain risk factors which will be associated and you, you, can, you can explore these uh, points, but usually you, this patient will have some risk factors, which is uh, leading to this uh, aneurysm. Okay, so this will be one thing. So you need to, usually it will be either cardiovascular or respiratory, okay, or CNS, okay, or at uh, generalized atherosclerosis. Okay, so uh, in addition to risk factors, you can say the end organ damage or as a part of the party, a part of one like uh, multi-dimensional things uh, from um, uh, different things which are will be coexisting in this patient. Okay, uh, so you have to assess the patient accordingly. Uh, I'm just trying to give you an idea, and then we can explore this topic. Then uh, other uh, will be uh, that uh, if, if, for example, if it is an emergency that patient will be in shock, okay? So all the things related to the concept of damage control resuscitation will be there, okay? 
the concept of massive blood transfusion will be there. Okay. Then, like, uh, you need to, uh, like, in massive blood transfusion, either one, one part will be that how you are uh, di directing uh, the, the blood transfusion, how, what are the, like, uh, 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 what like what monitoring you are doing related to uh, that uh, blood transfusion okay so like uh, thromboelastography and things like that okay so this will be the headings you can explore related to it is how you will interpret the findings of thromboelastography how will you dictate the the blood transfusion and how will you tackle the problems related to blood transfusion then big big things will be interoperatively will be like cramp clamping and cross clamping uh, sorry uh, 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 cross clamping and unclamping i'm sorry okay so there will be some happenings which will be occurring during the clamp so what will be the organs which will be at risk if you just can participate kidneys very good kidneys and spinal cord Yes, kidney, brain. I'm sorry, brain. Brain also. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you will be like you have to handle the hemodynamic sequelae which are occurring during clamping and uh, unclamping. So, un uh, you can say that uh, clamping uh, there will be effects in the upper part above the level of clamp, and there will be sort of hypertension and overloaded situation. Okay. And below the level play, there will be ischemia. Okay, so that's why kidneys can damage. There may be problems related to spinal cord. Okay, and uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, some something related to uh, like uh, cerebral physiology. Okay, and when they open, you can say that it is sort of a big, big uh, like tourniquet opening. Okay. So uh, it will be just like reperfusion, reperfusion, okay? Reperfusion as occurs during un, uh, opening of tourniquet, during reperfusion of organ transplants, like kidney transplant or liver transplant, or even heart transplant or lung transplant. So it will be just like tourniquet or organ transplants, okay? So you see, the, uh, we, uh, we are only thinking about aneurysm and we are not, going in details we are just trying to have a have an idea of what this topic is okay so like uh, for example uh, something if you just explore more that there may be need of uh, what sort of monitoring you will needing you will be needing in this surgery if it is open like because if it is uh, like endovascular things will be a little different but if it is uh, open you will be monitoring in addition to standard one and standard two ASA, like uh, what we know, uh, extra what will be? Yes, Usman? Uh, sir, temperature and uh, invasive arterial line. Uh, temperature is monitoring. in the standard two. Okay. okay. Sir, so invasive, arti uh, invasive monitoring like arterial line. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, CVP. CVP plus minus p and and, uh, and sir uh, pulmonary artery catheter or any cardiac output monitoring cardiac uh, output monitoring okay then then uh, it's not finished you will be needing sir uh, bear hugger uh, bear hugger okay bear hugger okay tag what sir am? tag rotam tag or rotam yes. tag rotam and sir cell saver just a second one more thing one more thing tax in addition to tax uh, rotam you need inr because okay, they INR. are INR or uh, there is because there is bedside INR machine which measures the INR and ACT yes ACT because they are giving heparin you are using heparin yes sir for heparin when, ACT they, are, is when they are then uh, what else very good urine output cell saver sir cell saver urine output yes cell saver you know if any one of you want to interrupt and ask any question just feel free to ask okay just raise the hand and i will take the question so cell saver so there will be things related to cell saver then what else abg is sir abg is very good what else 
hemoq if available hemoq is uh, is a device in which you are just getting the like uh, it's a, it's a sort of giving you a rough idea about the hemoglobin okay non invasively what else bis very good bis and electro so like neuro physiological monitoring for with reference to uh, if if uh, you have spinal doubt cord. that the cord might be damaged if you are expecting spinal cord ischemia cord. okay so as you told that there should be bear hugger there should be cell saver okay what else there should be rapid uh, level 1 infuser rapid infuser system okay which are a capability of even up to 1 liter per minute yes okay then what else very good the sir fluid warmers warmers okay what else uh, sir infusion pumps for uh, inotropes very good so because uh, not only inotropes you will be needing inotropes you will be needing vasopressors okay you will be needing vasodilators okay and when you uh, are told about intra arterial blood pressure monitoring maybe you need, need two i two two at uh, two sites yes up and below okay up and below so you need in the upper half of the body and you need in the lower half of the body okay then what else and it should be this uh, vasopressor monitoring sir i'm CVP sorry cvp monitoring cvp transducer for transducer yes. for cvp cvp and uh, uh, you told it you told about it cvp okay <clears throat> so uh, you understand that in this one topic you need to explain so many things and whatever they want to ask you they will go to that direction because it's not possible to ask and answer all these things in one question but believe me one nice thing is that if you remove the word aneurysm the number of things will be common in any bleeding patient a number of things which we have discussed you a number of things you can tell in a uh, massive obstetric hemorrhage you can tell in firearm any bleeding patient majority of things will be common so if you understand that if you have a patient with like we can explore a little bit more about blood transfusion okay so in that blood transfusion you need to have a contact with the blood bank okay and uh, you are trying to figure out which products you are needing so maybe you are needing prbcs okay you are needing ffps you are needing cryoprecipitates okay you are needing any like nova 7 okay for control of uh, bleeding and then you are tackling with the complications okay you is uh, some uh, metabolic problems okay uh, reactions mild reactions then uh, overloads patient can go in overload as well okay so you have to maintain the oxygen carrying capacity and you know um, uh, maybe just one more thing because when we tell asa AS is a standard 1 and standard 2 standard 1 is the presence of the anesthetic and standard 2 is blood pressure non invasive blood pressure ecg okay what about what else saturation spo2 and tidal co2 and tidal co2 okay and temperature temperature okay so these are thing but in in with reference to ecg you may, might be looking for ischemia and uh, arrhythmias okay because this will be this patient will be prone and especially you may need some altered C, cm5 or cb5 okay or lead to specifically for ischemia with reference to uh, for example even pulse oximeter again you can have pulse oximeter both in uh, upper and lower limb okay um and tidal co2 temperature uh, you will be man my maintaining the core body temperature okay 
okay uh, non invasive bp cuff do you need non invasive bp cuff if you have two arterial blood pressure you can you can pay make it on manual and intermittently one to two hour or any time you want to compare the blood pressures you can do it okay so uh, something to for renal renal protection and spinal cord protection what what, what you can do steroid administration steroid what else diuretic for spinal cord okay you will try to maintain the perfusion pressures have you heard of um okay so for renal protection what you can do manitol manitol there is a medication that called apixamine it is being used in some time and another medication for renal protection what is that n acetyl cysteine cysteine okay so it's a free radical scavenging so so these are the things yes dr dora you raise the hand yes. Yeah, so in my institution, they uh, when they're doing thoracoabdominal aneurysms, they often uh, put in a spinal catheter to release some spinal fluid in order to maintain the uh, spinal cord perfusion pressure. Very good. When, Very good. Yeah. You see, this is this is what is called as practical experience. Okay, it's my luck. It's my luck. I have not done one of much of it. I don't think I I have never done it uh, open. Uh, it's just my luck. I have done some uh, endovascular. But I have never done open. Okay. So this is just my good luck or bad luck that I have never done. So this is, uh, so why, uh, Dr. Dora, why will they do this release, this um, uh, uh, this uh, CSF, why they release it? What is the rationale to do it? Well, the rationale is that the perfusion is the resultant of, uh, uh, well, uh, arterial pressure and uh, the pressure within uh, the cerebrospinal fluid pressure. So yes. if you cannot increase further the arterial blood supply Perfusion. because you have a cross clamp, yes. you kind of try to decrease uh, the cerebrospinal fluid uh, pressure. Actually, this is almost the same principle which is being done as Monroe Kelly doctrine, almost, okay? It is not exactly, but almost is, it is the same. That in the brain, this is a close cavity where there is a, a brain tissue and blood and CSF. Okay. So if you don't, uh, one thing is not compensated by other, the pressure will increase. When pressure will increase, the perfume will decrease. So it's almost similar principle here. Okay. And then they, the surgeon may, they may have some bypass. Okay. They can, they can bypass that area and they can have a distal shunt okay of course this is not our domain so uh, we may we not be uh, uh, dealing with it and then uh, when you are giving uh, multiple blood transfusions uh, you are you might need to give calcium chloride or bicar uh, this uh, gluconate okay you might need to um, like uh, uh, tackle with the the metabolic complications you need to maintain the the perfusion pressure and things like that so in in this uh, like uh, in this way uh, you will be able to and just a second uh, you will find so any questions up till now Sir, is uh, there a need of cardiopulmonary bypass for the surgery, or it is done um, without it? Yes, like, if uh, it is, if it is thoracic, then, then uh, maybe maybe it is needed. That's why uh, you, you are absolutely right. I I missed this point. Okay, I missed this point. So it's a very good point you raised. Uh, uh, just like I I wrote one lung ventilation, they there might be need of. Uh, 
because uh, it depends on the type. So when you will be preparing this case, um, uh, you will be looking at this. So actually, uh, if, uh, I'm just I will just try to cover the rest of the thing. I'm a number of things I have explained to you, and you will be just uh, having actually sometimes the review books give you a very good insight to how to approach a topic. So you will just have a look at here and this will be just a tip of iceberg and then you will try to cover the rest of the things which may be, may be, may be asked, okay? So uh, like uh, this is a scenario that you have a 74 year old man with ruptured aortic aneurysm, blood pressure is 70, 40, okay? So what are major problems managing a ruptured aortic aneurysm? So preoperatively there will be severe hypovolemia, fluid resuscitation, must be cautious, why? Because this will lead to lethal triad. You will be doing the damage control resuscitation. Okay. So you will be quick assess, quick, you will have a quick assessment. And we actually in monitoring, I now I will try to recall what thing we miss. If we have the possibility to have having T. If it is possible, T will it can also help. Okay. So assessment of concomitant medical problems, patient are usually arteriopaths, as I told you, that etiology will be important. Okay with significant coronary disease or other peripheral vascular disease. So no time for lengthy investigations. You cannot delay it. Assess uh, to vascular surgery may need to transfer out. Okay. Uh, anyways, so interoperatively, what will be the challenges that at induction patient can collapse, cross clamping, unclamping, and this large blood losses, blood FFPs and platelets are required, FF, uh, cryoprecipitate, effects of massive transfusion, temperature control, metabolic acidosis. Okay, so post-operative problem we have not covered actually so because post-operatively again there may be residual ham uh, this uh, there may be rehemorrhage there may be the the effects of the management which you have done okay so uh, post-operative cardiovascular uh, sequelae can happen like hemorrhage myocardial and lower limb ischemia because of uh, the clamp or because of residual any uh, like uh, uh, problem. And then another thing, in addition to bleeding, they have not written here is embolism. Because if uh, uh, this uh, uh, embolism, this uh, aneurysm, before it ruptures, it can have uh, like uh, embol embolic phenomena as well. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is another problem. So uh, respiratory support may be needed, metabolic acidosis, and even metabolic alkalosis can occur. Uh, because of massive blood transfusion later on after day uh, two when uh, like day one uh, all these uh, citrate can cause metabolic late metabolism can cause metabolic alkalosis even okay so uh, renal failure is common due to perioperative hypotension aortic cross clamping uh, in, in, in infrarenal clamp the chances will be less but still uh, it can happen okay so atheromatous emboli, that's what I was telling you. Surgical insult, intra-abdominal hypertension. Intra-abdominal hypertension or compartment syndrome when they close it, okay? So neurological sequelae because of spinal cord problem, paraplegia, stroke can occur, okay? So how will you uh, uh, target it uh, to start with? So your approach will be airway breathing circulation. You will try to increase the FiO2 and you will take the large bore IV cannulas. Um, in emergency, you will not try for CVP. In emergencies, you will be targeting 14 gauge or even vascular sheath. Okay. So uh, it, it is just a, um, like, um, uh, I will just tell you a practical thing uh, that the sheath which we use for passing uh, this uh, pulmonary artery catheter is around 8 French. Okay. So sometimes. Swan's Gans? Mm, yes. The sheath, I'm talking about the sheath through which. Yes. Swan Gans sheet. Are, Yes. So actually, uh, that sheath, if you have available, you can use it for giving very fast fluid. Okay. So technique to use it is that you will take any cannula in a big vein in the forearm, in the cubital fossa. And if then through that cannula, you can pass a guide wire. Okay. And then through that, through uh, like guide wire, you can railroad the sheath. So actually, we used to do it in uh, liver transplant. We just used to take a simple cannula, 20 gauge, and yeah. then through that we pass a guide wire and through over it we railroad the, the vascular sheath. And vascular sheath will have a, a crazy flow. 
okay because actually vascular sheets will be uh, used uh, in a nice way through the rapid infuser systems okay so uh, like uh, there will be again discussion about which fluid you should be given we have just recently come out of it so i will not go into it we will be giving normal saline and then later on you can give ring the lactate and colloids and everything which you want to give okay so this one um, the, the, which they what they are giving a repeated 250 ml fluid boluses titrated to physiological endpoints consciousness based deficit lactate should be used at, uh, they are trying to say and this uh, goal directed fluid therapy okay because if you are giving too much fluid if you are giving too much fluid before they uh, approach the bleeding point it will be it will not be of very uh, much use okay another point which we missed I, when i was telling you is the massive blood uh, massive uh, transfusion protocol okay so massive transfusion mtp there is a like hospital based protocol uh, when it is activated they they they, they have a crash uh, uh, crash pack so it has uh, uncrossed match o negative or o positive which will be there immediately okay so they can ask you about this massive transfusion protocol and the same will be applicable if you have a massive obstetric hemorrhage okay so we don't have to delay the surgery you will be just trying to uh, like uh, uh, optimize the patient as much as possible uh, start fluid resuscitation airway breathing circulation approach and then you will transfer the patient into the or okay and surgery should not be delayed by prolonging attempts to insert arterial and central line at this stage your approach will be that, that they have because if even if you take very good for lines and you are not able to save the, uh, the control the bleeding the patient will die okay so big drips and okay so how will you induce this patient which and uh, uh, induction agent would you like to use if you have blood pressure 70 40 in a in a 70 year old baba ketamine ketamine uh, what about atomidate Atomidate. Yes, atomidate can be if, if available atomidate uh, can be given and uh, if it is uh, like full stomach then you can have rapid sequence induction like uh, you, it because at that time there you just have to outweigh the risk versus benefit okay and as they as they do it they they may be scrubbed and then you will do a rapid sequence induction okay a muscle relaxation may release the tamponade on the aortic worsening bleeding so this is all also very important thing okay when they open the abdomen that time patient will collapse because the tamponade effect will finish similarly this ipp so they do cannot delay it okay so they you will just pre-oxygenate the patient and you will uh, do the uh, induction okay they are just common thing temperature probe nasogastric tube urinary catheter warming devices okay and this is for uh, the renal renal protection this one i told you the evelyn well infuser it was written uh, here okay for rapid infusion okay so uh, like uh, when they have this cross clamp svr may raise 40 percent resulting in myocardial ischemia okay uh, if in increasing the inspired volatile uh, concentration and giving opioids are not effective then gtn or vasodilators are being given okay uh, because we have not touched that aspect of uh, uh, aortic aneurysm that how to control the intraoperative management but I, I i hope you understand the basic theme okay so any questions about it sir bowel ischemia will be can be an event i'm sorry how, how to protect the bowel ischemia? Maintain the perfusion pressures and uh, correct the acidosis. Mm, because the rest of the things you will be, uh, you can find in, ev in every book and everything. These are uh, like uh, uh, not... Uh, very, very important actually maybe we will just have another session uh, to cover the rest of the aspects okay
so uh, tomorrow maybe i will not be taking class maybe um, so uh, inshallah day after tomorrow i will we will just continue the rest of endovascular and what are the things okay so thanks a lot everybody i hope you understand yes spinal and epidural catheters actually putting spinal or uh, you are uh, sorry dora i don't understand this is really you were saying related to uh, the re re relief of the pressure well, that was before when we were mentioning everything that could be put yes, in yes, this patient. Yes, yes. yeah, you're so spinal for that, but also, I mean, I've only read about it and we don't use it, but for elective surgeries, they often put epidural for pain. But I've read that it's possible to use epidural for cooling the spinal cord, like to help maintain, uh, maintain spinal cord during this the period of the scheme. Yes, of course. This will be actually a decision to be made uh, by, by the team discussion because these these are the advantages, but the problems will be related to heparin. Okay, because uh, uh, there may be chances of developing uh, epidural hematoma, if because they are using heparin intraoperatively. This is the only uh, thing which is against it. Okay, so this this will be according to the risk versus benefit. Yes, Mazuma. Uh, sir, I'm unable to get the point of using spinal catheter. Are they used for uh, perfusion purpose or to decrease the uh, uh, pressure? Decrease the pressure. Uh, intra, decrease the pressure to, to drain the, the pressure. CSF. To, it will drain the CSF to decrease the pressure for, as, as Dr. Dora to, told, that if you, perfusion is compromised if there is too much pressure in the CSF. And so like it's a, it's a balance between the arterial pressure and uh, venous pressure and CSF pressure. So if uh, if you manage to decrease uh, CSF pressure, perfusion may improve. That, so that's the rationale. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, pulmonary edema can also occur. So okay. Anyways, thank you. So day after tomorrow, uh, we will have a session in China. Uh, most probably in the afternoon, one p.m. Um, three p.m. Pakistan time. Okay. I will send the link in China. Okay. Bye bye.